When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in its heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble and persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Have you understood all these things? So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, crippled, made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they praise the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, Where could we find enough bread in such a remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked, Seven few small fish. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000, besides women and children. In his name, the nations will put their hope. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must, he must Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me, find it. Uh, did the Spirit of the Lord just say, confess? So I yelled out, Lord, I'm guilty. Lord Jesus, save me. And, 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 and as I was confessing my sins, it, it, it felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. It, it, it felt like, it felt like my, my stomach was filled off, got me started. And I knew I was saved. And I knew I was saved. He just filled me with his Holy Ghost and pulled me out of the pits of hell. And I tell, tell, every single one of you young people out there, if you don't think he can do the same thing for you, you just give him a chance tonight. I tell you what, let me tell you, I have been kicked out of my house for the beliefs that I have. And I tell you right now that he's been behind me every bit of the way. Next week I go on 
to seminary school, and after that I'm on my way to Mexico to preach the gospel. Nothing will be impossible for you. I tell you, I guarantee you, if you give him a chance tonight, he will pull you out of the pits of hell. He will clean you from every bit of sin, and he will change your life forever. And today, I am still an addict, but I'm addicted to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Woo. And I tell you, right now, this is my point of no return. I'm going to die in this watery grave with Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. Woo. I know now I have the best feeling ever. If I was to die tonight, I know I would go to heaven and I would be with him. I would be with him. Hallelujah! My name is Michelangelo Dixon. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. The devil has had me in bondage for 33 years, Lord. 33 long years, Lord. I've been addicted to sin for 22 of those years, Lord. I come down to Memphis from Mobile, thinking I was coming to New Hope Home to get all crack and alcohol, but... I met somebody else down here. I met somebody else down here. I met my father. My father said, come on home, son. My father said, I got a place for you. My name is Chuck Kissy, and I'm from Wiggins, Mississippi. And um, I'd, uh, with all that I am, I want to give the Lord the glory for how great he is. And I know so many of you here know how great he is. And then, uh, well, um, I've, uh, the Lord has, has just asked me, and I'm a, uh, and I want to be an obedient servant to, to say that the Lord has changed my life and touched me and cleansed me. And so many of you know what that is, but so many of you don't. And, and, um, and, and the reason you don't, and I'm just talking to a segment, but the segment's here. And that's the people that, that have been deceived. And, uh, and now, therefore, they are deceiving. And that's, and that's who I was. And you, uh, you've already told yourself so many times that you're not a sinner. But you are, you know, and I was. And, and what I'm saying, that, uh, Lord, I just pray that you would give me the wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom to say your word, say your peace, that you might receive glory now, Father. You see, I, I, I'm a man who, who so many thought was just so great and everything, but, uh, but I'm not. And, I, and, and that's what I hope the Lord will deal with your hearts, because I started looking at other women, you know, and then... Uh, and, and that's how the, the evil one can see you because all of your co-workers look at women much more than you guys do and you just look at them a little bit and that starts your deception that starts your deception but if you'll deceive yourself and deceive others like that then you'll lie and if you'll lie you'll cheat and if you'll cheat you'll steal because if you allow yourself to sin you become a slave to sin and I'm talking I'm simply talking to you guys who are, are like me and everyone thinks you're good and I'm just telling you, you know, I'm, t I'm, I'm just, I'm giving you this but no matter what the cost, no matter what you've got to do, no matter the price, you choose your Lord. tell you the truth unless you change and become like little children you will never, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven therefore whoever humbles himself like this child 
is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven.